Hello everyone and welcome to another video in my M140i. I've owned this thing for 555 days now, just over a year and a half, and I've done 20,000 miles. In the comments on the videos that I make about this car, a question quite often comes up, and that is, what car next? What car is going to replace this? Am I going to change this car? Am I going to try something else? Or should I keep it and enjoy it as it is? Or should I modify it? Firstly, I own this car outright. There are no monthly repayments for me. There's no end of lease, there's no PCP, no finance at play at all. It's entirely mine to do with as I wish. So let's consider what I've got here with BMW's M140i. Well, quite simply, it's unique, always has been. It's a type of car we're unlikely to ever see again. It's small-ish, it's no featherweight, but it's not too heavy. And it's got a big torquey engine up front, driving the rear wheels with 360 horsepower. Most importantly, on mine, it's a very, very rare thing. And that is, down there, I've got a third pedal and I've got a manual shift. And as we all know, that makes this car the ultimate hero spec BMW 1 series. That's official. That's not me making that up. Look it up. Piston head said so. So it's manual. It's got the classic drivetrain configuration, the likes of which we'll never ever see again in this class of car. Even without the LSD, that's a big, big tick for this car right there. But with the LSD, it's almost a slam dunk. So let's talk about other cars. What other cars appeal to me? Well, being completely honest, there's not a great deal out there at the moment that does interest me. About the only thing that I'd happily climb out of this and into is Honda's FK8 Civic Type R, but you know, that's, that's wrong wheel drive. None of the four wheel drive alternatives interest me at all. I get no fizz whatsoever at the thought of driving them. Besides, when it comes to four wheel drive, been there, done that. <laughs> Didn't buy an RS t-shirt though. For now then, I plan on keeping this car for a, for a good while yet, which brings me neatly onto modifications. Now, my car modifying history is quite limited, but I have in the past completely ruined a perfectly good car, a car I keep thinking back to. I have nothing but regret for what I did to that car. I just went too far with it. I seriously wish I hadn't done that. It ended up being a very rapid and capable car, but it was almost unusable. I barely drove it at the end. So I'm not going to be making that mistake with this car. Having said that, mods to this car aren't 100% ruled out. I'm just not rushing into it. I'm going to take my time. I want to make sure I don't ruin this car. So let's consider exactly what I could do to this. I'll start with the suspension, specifically springs and dampers. Now I have active suspension and I find it handles just fine. It doesn't feel the best. It's not without its compromises, but it's okay. I get along with it. A friend of mine, Nick, took me out in his 140i and he's got Bill Stein's B12 Pro kit on it. I was only a passenger, but even from the passenger seat, I could tell that it rode really well, dealt with the road imperfections better than my soft setting did. But then when he upped the pace, it felt really nicely tied down and the body control seemed really, really good. But it's a lot of money for something that really I'm kind of okay with as standard. Then there's geometry. M4 lower control arms is something I hear a lot about. I'm sure there's other things that you can do as well just to tweak it down there. That's not so much money as the springs and dampers, but again, I'm kind of fine with the car as it is. I don't get any of the um, excess shoulder wear that people talk of, even when driving this thing on track. So I don't feel there's anything there that I really need to improve upon. I've done the rear diff. I've got BMW's M Performance plated Drexler locking differential out back. So I've got traction and rear end control sorted and I'm fine with the brakes for now. They held up okay last time out at Goodwood, which was standard discs and pads, but with ATE Type 200 fluid. If they do get to the point where they struggle a bit, then, you know, pads, maybe some lines, cheap and easy options. But right now, I'm not gonna be doing anything with the brakes. And then there's the exhaust. Now, 
as I said in my last video, I like the subtlety of this car, that it looks like a 116 diesel and goes under most people's radar. I know there are plenty of aftermarket options. I can take delete resonators or cut silencers out or modify them or so on. But I like the quiet life, so I'm not going to be changing the exhaust anytime soon. And that leaves me with the engine. BMW's masterpiece that is the B58. So much inbuilt headroom, so much potential. Does it need more power? Well, here's something that will put the power this car has into perspective. I'm an 80s child, well, kind of an 80s teen really, and I grew up with posters of a few of these on my bedroom wall. They were truly mental supercars. They had performance I just could not get my head around. Completely mind-blowing. And this is where I'm struggling the most with having a solid reason not to modify this car. This car isn't short of power, really, but if I gave it a cheeky remap, maybe a sports cat downpipe, I've got power and torque close to or greater than every single one of those supercars. In a comfortable, practical and economical car that I get to drive every single day. Current situation accepted, of course. As someone who grew up quite literally idolizing those supercars, that's insane. I'm resisting the urge right now. It certainly doesn't need more power. And truth be told, I haven't really fully gotten to grips with that rear diff yet. But for what it costs, for how easy it is and how safe it is for the B58, it is very, very hard to resist. I'm kind of thinking it would be rude not to. A BMW 1 Series, as fast as or faster than all of those supercars. Maybe. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks very much for watching.